I'm Jakob, I'm a PhD student at Heidelberg University. And together with Benjamin, we want to show you how you can use the Framescase 2 platform um, you know, via the eBrains Collaboratory. So Steve already gave an overview over the Framescase architectures and we used the second version of it. So a single chip with 512 neurons. And Andrew already showed the different modes, how you can access the Framescase 2 platform. And he also teased that we now have an interactive mode. And this is what we want to showcast here now. So the examples we will show are based on the workshop, nice workshop earlier this year. So if you want to have a look later, you can go to GitHub, Google for Cranescase 2 demos, go to the branch to Python notebooks and can download them for yourselves and have a look afterwards. So as the title suggests, I will start with a single point neuron and in able to use the interactive mode, we have to start by setting up uh, our environment. And afterwards, we start by importing Python packages we want to use to define our network. As Andrew Davidson already said, we have also the Pine API. So we import our backend here. And now I'm going to skip the first few examples and just go to the last one here. And this example, we have one neuron on the brain case, two architectures and two external inputs, one excitatory and one inputs. Um, we will use a calibration for this experiment. And we create a default calibration for every brain case to set up every night. And I just execute this cell here to load this default calibration. And afterwards, I define my network. So what we do here is quite similar to what Andrew Davison showed, um, we start by calling setup function. Here we inject our custom calibration. Then we create a single population with, with one neuron, say what we want to record, spikes and membrane potential. And afterwards, we create our external sources, one excitatory and one in retrieval. Now we call the pine run function, and our network gets emulated on the Cranescase 2 architecture. Now finally, we plot our result and end our experiment. And as for live demos, as Andrew already said, they might fail. So normally we should see a plot already, but it seems that it takes a bit of time now. Maybe I just uh, interrupt the kernel and reset the cell. One second. Yeah, it seems to be a problem with the kernel. Maybe can you check if it's working for me? Let's try again. Yes. Now the kernel is here again. And let's have a look if you now can execute our experiment. So, first we load the calibration again, and then we execute the experiment. Now we see our result. So, we see we have uh, one excitatory input at the start, then an inhibitory one, and four more excitatory inputs. Now we can use here these sliders to get a feeling for our system and how it behaves. So for example, we could increase the rate of the inhibitory input. And now we see that this peak here is more, pro uh, more pronounced. We could also decrease the um, time between the inputs. And now it's executed in the hardware and we get to see the result quite of immediately. And we see that they start to stack here. And now we can also try to 
um, get it firing on neurons. So we increased the excitatory rate, wasn't quite enough. So we decreased the interspike interval. Now we see that our neurons fires, the creatures here at the threshold and then goes refractory for some period and relaxes back to the potential. So in my next example, I will show uh, still a single neuron, but this time a structured neuron. So if you know the brain scales one architectures, we already could connect several neuron circuits to form larger compartments, for example, to increase the synaptic venom. This option we still have on brain scales two. So we have the opportunity to form compartments. And in addition to that, we have a shared line, which is much in red in this picture here, which allows us to um, connect these different compartments via tunable conductance. And in this notebook, I want to create a single chain, a simple chain of four compartments, which are connected by conductances. And I will uh, put a synaptic input in one after another and see how the uh, response in different compartments looks like. So you see here the model at the top, and in the bottom, you see the implementation on brain scales two. So we will need eight neuron circuits in total because we will always connect two circuits to one compartment. And these compartments we connect via the shaft line to form the chain of compartments. We start again by setting up our environment, uh, having our imports, uploading the default calibration. And now uh, we start by setting up the network. Uh, we have here two parameters. Um, one length of the chain and the number of synchronous inputs. And now we start uh, constructing our structured neuron. As mentioned before, we will need eight neuron circuits, so two times the length. And then we uh, set the different connections between the neuron circuits. So I just execute this part. And finally, before we can start our experiment, we have to set the external input. So we will inject the synaptic input into one a compartment after another. Now we also have an experiment function which allows us to change the weight of the external input and the conductance between the different compartments. We just set these parameters in our network and then we will execute the experiment um, several times on the brain space platform and record the response in one compartment after another. We also need a function to plot our results, which I just execute here. And then we have um, here our function, which gives us nice sliders again, so we can play around with the parameters a little bit. So you see the result here. Um, what we see here is that we, on the y-axis, we change the injection side of the synaptic input. And on the x-axis, we see the response in the different compartments. So in the first row, we inject the synaptic input in the first compartment, and we see that the postsynaptic uh, post uh, potential travels along the chain and gets attenuated. Similar for the second compartment, here the post travels in both directions and gets uh, attenuated. Now we can, for example, increase the weight. And if you now look at the scale in the bottom left, you will see that the post height increases as expected. And we can also have a look at the conductance. And if we decrease it here, for example, go to about 60, we see that the attenuation is very stronger. And yes, so that's for my part. And now I give to Benjamin, who will show you the super spike learning.